Keep the word, are you ready, Phil? What? What's that? Let's go. Phil here and Guy, we're going to do the 1106 up Norton's and they're uh, going to lead out Phil for the first bit. It's going to be interesting. How, how you did the 1114 up Norton's then, we think? Uh, yeah, that's what I think, so when I start, we're uploading now, but yeah. Blistering time, of, of, yeah, that's, that's incredible, man. You don't even look flustered, uh, flustered at all. No, you didn't see me at the top. I, was, I'm, you know, I recover quick. But... You do recover very quick. What's your opinions of Adelaide so far? Uh, I love it here. Yeah, it's real nice. A little too hot. Other than that, I'm all good. This week's been pretty, pretty hot. Just by what I saw just then, I think it's gonna be tight. I'll do my best. Looking yeah. forward to it. All right, Thanks man. for the help. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Uh, like, this is the. Yeah, yeah. 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 You want to be vertical. Yeah. But then how does that stick onto this? And it's just the, the arm. Step it now or? Yeah. Can you let me out? <laughs> you got full gas or you got full KOM? I'll go as fast as I can. It's 1106, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, you want to introduce the climb? You want to be on the video? Yeah. You might also. What's the what's the context? Uh, we're just gonna say what's the other side of the road. A bit, but, um, I'll just I'll just talk and you can follow my lead real quick. You can just give me a couple pacing tips, something like that. Yeah. Serious so pacing tips or trolling pacing tips? <laughs> Whatever you want. Uh, I've written it twice, so you can. <laughs> Don't troll. <laughs> you definitely save some at the beginning, save some at the middle, save some at the end. Yeah. <laughs> you don't ever want to go too hard at any point. I was in the fans who love this one. Love and hate it. People have been asking me for... Uh, It'd be good to cross-promote uh, on the... You got YouTube man? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yes. <laughs> but you know what you're saying. Like, cross. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's great to You want to start with me and then... Durian Rider, welcome. Cheers, Phil. Good to have you down under, mate. Thanks. Um, all right, what do you think? Any any tips on this? For today, the conditions have been pretty lucky. It's been calm today. Okay. Want to, generally, want a northwesterly. I knew you'd say that. Super last time, but today's calm. I've done it a few times this morning. It's calm. You've got good conditions, so you're lucky. It's not too hot yet. About 23 Celsius. There is a, a couple of aggressive koalas on the head. Oh. They're called drop bears. Drop bears. So, big... Okay. This is a thing you guys make up to make fun of tourists, right? Yeah. There's no such thing as drop bears. No, there is. This time of year, there is. Summertime. I don't believe you. Okay. Uh, so it's a koala that you, will drop you on you so and just bite you in the neck or what? It's just territorial. Once you're out of their zone, then they drop off and peel off. But their skin suit's a bit thin, so you might have an issue. But we'll see. It's got the car just whacking the stick. If I get attacked by a koala on video, worth it. Worth it. So much better than anything else that could happen. For sure. All right. But in terms of technical wise, it's a pretty consistent climb. It's a speed, speed climb. It's yep. fast. It's not yep. steep. This first part, first 400 meters is the steepest. Okay. So just keep it even watch, you know what to do, and just, just launch it. Just so we're just listening to catch Steven. Um, Alright, so that's it there, and then yep. and then just pace it. There's nothing, yeah, it's, it's a KOM. 11 minute fancy, Jedi Knight unleashing cool. the beast. Pacing it well. Alright, what, uh, what's what's your best time on this? 1257. Alright, I just want to beat you. Okay. There you go, you beat me then it's, it's worth, worth the trip. Okay, thanks man, thanks for coming. Alright. Are you ready? That's good, appreciate it. Yeah, that was really good. good. Another climb you should do is a uh, comes off Mount Summit called Woodlands Way. That's a wall. I'm not here long enough. I want to do. How long time in town for? Uh, at least Saturday. Bill, 
first bit. It's going to be interesting. Teamwork. Teamwork. <laughs> Team YouTube. That drive is good fun. So you can be pushing out more, more watts now than when you're a pro or what? This is the descent of Norton Summer afterwards, and Phil's face was so fresh. Like his his physiology, I've, I've I've never seen anything like it. It was insane. I've seen a lot of people do you know high elevens up Norton Summit, some you know Jura riders, Tour de France riders, and they've looked gassed. And Phil had zero exertion in his body, in his posture, in his face, and I was like, how the fuck, man? Is he riding so much faster as a weekend warrior Strava hitter than he was when he's a world tour professional paid by a team to perform push out watts? You can see him on my right here. Um, just incredible. And so people ask me, do you think Phil is is on the on the cookie vitamins? You know, um, then that's a that's a fair question. Um, that's a fair question. And I, and I put that to Phil. You know, and he got incredibly offended incredibly offended and said fuck off basically you know uh so you know it's but here's the thing is again this i don't hate the guy but it is very very hypocritical for him to have a clean tattoo on his arm and for him to openly critique not not, not even critique but like you know slander people like Cancellara and say i think he had a motor in his bike and all this doping stuff and you know not just on a little you know, small setup, but in a book, you can Google up, um, you know, Phil Gaimon, Cancellara, stuff like that, so, and Levi Leipheim and Tommy Danielson, and Phil has aggressively uh, shared his opinion about people, you know, and, and hey, he's, he's entitled to it, but as soon as, you know, someone's put it to him, hey, how are you doing more watts than dope riders? And you're claiming to be clean. How are you doing that? And he gets wildly offended. Uh, that's that's just very hypocritical. It's very bitter, and it doesn't allow for an explanation of how. My question is: How does Phil Guymon have a FTP of around 455 watts? You know, I mean, uh, yeah. Even the guy, uh, the guy, pun intended, guy who was uh, led out second behind me. Uh, he's a gun rider. Dude's, he's a gun rider. He got he won a crit recently against uh, Michael Freeberg, who's the Australian champion. And he won a crit on a disc bike, aero disc bike, you know, just a, a Chinese frame. And he won the crit. He smashed him. So, really incredible effort. So, And Guy only lasted maybe another minute after me. And then ping, pop. So, Phil, uh, he has this incredible motor I, I mean i've ridden with chris Froome hard up climbs and and seen chris Froome's face fatigued and he's been shaky on the bike wobbly i've seen i've ridden with richie port up climbs before and seen richie sweat phil wasn't even sweating he wasn't I was, I've, I've ridden with richie port a couple of times and you know back in the sky days and that little bmc time and, and even the other day the trek stuff and and he, richie's sweating you know you can you can see the effort I could see no effort in Phil other than he's rocking on the saddle, you know. But it, it was insane. So for me, Phil with the clean tattoo and doing that performance at Norton Summit in front of my own eyes, I'm highly suspicious. I'm highly skeptical. And uh, if Phil is doing that totally natty, then he literally is an insane freak of nature. And, uh, you know, look, at he's just, he just sits so fresh on the bike, like he's ready to do it again. And if I've been right, you know, having, I got my first license in 97, and I study physiology, you know, at a personal level, how people hold themselves and how they go over bumps and how they turn their head and what their eyes look like and what their cheeks look like and their calves and their, their water retention in their stomach or the ankles. And, and Phil's physiology, where he was just, you know, he was sort of like bone white almost, almost anemic looking upper body, which is what I've seen in some other not to be mentioned named uh, riders who are also doing some crazy stuff in the Tour de France. So it was, I don't know, it's it, a lot of different things are there for me. So this is not to hate or trash, this is just to 
share my honest opinion and and my viewers count on that so people say do you think phil guy Mon is is as clean as he claims in my opinion i would say definitely not and if, if he claims it's just coffee cookies and water and some ramen noodles ten dollars a day pro i don't know i'm i'm uh you know, I'm not a believer. I'm not a believer. You, how can you push more watts, you know, training less? You know, it, it doesn't work that way. It's, name me one professional rider who got booted from the World Tour because they were, were not good enough, because they were shit basically by World Tour standards, and then they go and train less, and they put out like professional fucking World Tour GC level watts on climb, FTP levels. We're talking FTP. Oh, this is fresh legs and stuff like that. Yeah, we're talking FTP. If Phil's FTP would be at least 455, at least. He could go on way quicker up Norton's, man. If he had some people to race against and really get you know, really get in the groove, some music, some charge up. Man, this, you know, that's crazy shit. That's crazy shit. So FTP of 455, super skinny. You know, super skinny. You know, if, you, if you saw someone on the street looking like that and they asked... For five bucks, you'd be like, I'll give you, I don't know, I'm not sure. You know, like, just super skinny, super strong, and, uh, you know, not even tanned or nothing like that, just sort of, like, frail looking, but no fatigue, no sweat at the top of a climb. You know, just, I've never seen anything like that. You know, I've ridden with Valverde, I've ridden with Froome and Cadell and Lance. I remember riding with Lance Armstrong, and he was sweating, you know what I mean? Like, crazy shit this is 2009 when lance was back in form so yeah i don't know i'm uh i would love to know what phil's secret is you know i would is it some vitamin nasa vitamins that in tijuana is it the special cookie dough mixture i'm not sure what it is but uh you know hey that's his choice that's uh it's fine but i think it's you know it is hypocritical for him to go after cancellara and tom danielson and tommy danielson got phil the contract you know let's be honest if it wasn't for Tommy D, I said this in other videos, that Tommy D was, you know, the doper who got results. And when you get results, you get UCI points. And when you get UCI points, you have a lot of pool in a team. And you can say, hey, I want my friend to come over here to this team for morale and training partner and such like that. So Tommy D got Phil with the big break in the World Tour. And then for to for Phil to go and trash Tommy D, that's just really uh, deplorable and disrespectful in my opinion just bow out if you don't want to be in the in the scene just bow out and just keep your mouth quiet because you know tommy d put his put himself out there to get you a job and then you go and trash him it's disrespectful so anyway that's just my comments and criticisms and, and he's an, he's another thing this is fucking crazy phil got that bike that bike is just like a you know a chinese carbon bike you know nice paint job and stuff like that and uh, he's only ridden it for a couple of days you know He's only ridden for a couple of days, very short term. So, you know, he's been riding the Cannondale for a couple of years. So he just jumps on a literally brand new bike and he's fucking m m mutant level power on it already. For me, it takes me like probably a thousand or two thousand, or even five thousand Ks to really gel on a bike. And if he just gets on a brand new bike and he's fucking launching it, you know, all these interstate travels and international travels. You know, just like fresh as fuck, go to Columbia, um, you know, a couple of days and then punching out 306 watts for three hours at, at altitude, at altitude, beating a little 50 kilo Colombian riders who are desperate to become pro riders. So it's, it's, it's impressive. It's mutant level. It is highly suspicious, but uh, I would say Phil wants the respect that he wants, then he should register with the UCI and be on the biological passport again and be open for testing and you know get onto that program otherwise you know, his credibility once people start looking at the watts and go hang on like you weren't in these watts back in the day you know it, all it will take is someone like jv to put up a, or michael rasmussen or whatever to put up a post and say hey mr clean cookie where's your biological passport data and then it will just start to you know fold from there but anyway i think you know i'm glad to see phil on the bike spread the message but come on man if you're gonna run the clean tattoo you know you gotta fucking walk the talk and be transparent and be open to investigation be open to criticism and you can't shut people down just because they're going to disagree with you because you wear the, you know you wear the clean tattoo just like i've got the vegan tattoo if someone says hey harley i think you're eating meat 
I ain't going to shut them down and block them or whatever. I'm going to say, hey, why do you think that? You know, let's, then let's go and do a fucking test or whatever, or you can come and, you know, let's, let's put some money on the table. You know, let's put some money on the table. But, yeah, so I think that level of, you know, shutting people down because they uh, have some questions is really, it's a Lance Armstrong tactic, you know. And Phil critiques Lance Armstrong, but he's doing the same stuff. So for me, it's just a bunch of projection. It's just a bunch of projection. And uh, and for, if Lance Armstrong wasn't around, neither would Phil. Lance Armstrong created Jonathan Valders. Jonathan Valders created that team. And Tommy D was a Lance Armstrong spinoff. And then he got Phil. You know, So Phil's just basically had a free ride off other people's hard work. And then he's going to go around just trashing them. So again... You know, everyone does that, then that's what destroys cycling. Destroys any any group or any community or any industry. If you go around trashing the very, you know, people that helped you or created the community, then that's just that's just fucking dumb, man. That's just really dumb. So anyway, not a hate video, just sharing comments and criticisms, genuinely, not trolling, genuinely, just sharing comments and criticisms. If you don't like doping, then don't make money off people who are doping. Otherwise you're just as bad as them. If you're going to critique them for me i don't care if people are taking gear or not uh, i understand the pressures and stuff like that and uh, but if you're going to get a clean tattoo then you know i'm going to call it out um you know if you're going to say you mr clean but clean tattoo and call out cancellara and when you're smashing him up climbs i don't know man i don't know <laughs> Yeah, we're seeing him. He used a lot of his track experience, track run. In a way, it was similar to how he won that stage in the Victor Harbour. He didn't have to hug the barriers on 